Hi folks, Will at LR Workshop. I had a couple of uh, just ex specific questions from a couple of subscribers that I was going to deal with uh, in this video. And the first one is from, from Craig Chasney Bond, and he's asking about whether there's any, there are any extra weather modifications for rest of the world's pet defenders. The basic answer, the answer to that is um, not really. We've, other than air conditioning, this one's got aircon. It's got two aftermarket fans on there, but you know that would be one for hotter climates. You'd have air conditioning. But other than that, not really. Um, there is an oil cooler for the R380. I've done another video on the adapters for that, and this one does have one fitted. This is aftermarket, so this is uh, a Mocha oil cooler and aftermarket pipes, and then it goes into the uh, standard R380 oil cooler. But I don't know if they are fitted as standard. Um, it's a bit of a conundrum. So I've seen dozens of rest of the world's better vendors. I mean, there's the 80 odd that I saw in Afghanistan and I poured over them like a fine tooth comb because that's the kind of person I am. Uh, I've driven four, I've seen a bunch of others, different places, and I've never seen an oil cooler on one as standard. I mean, this is the first, this is actually the first one I've ever seen that's got an oil cooler on it and it's not standard. And I do have some standard uh, R380 all cooler pipes, so I know what they look like. Um, so I've never seen them. However, looking at the, um, the kind of spec codes from the VIN numbers from a couple of rest of the world spec, like late models, 2006 late models, there's an entry in there that says oil cooler type equals cooled. And I don't know what that is because it may, it either relates to the engine or the gearbox. Now the engine, well, they've all got, all 300 TDIs have got oil coolers and they're in the, they're in the uh, radiator. And TD5s all had oil coolers and it was in the, the, the exchange on the side of the block. So why would they have an option for oil cooler? Maybe it should only relate to the, to the gearbox in that sense. So then it says cooled, which would make sense that it had a gearbox oil cooler fitted but I've never seen any. So they may have had gearbox oil coolers on rest of the world's pet defenders. I would love to find one with one on to prove that. I just haven't seen it personally, so I cannot, I cannot confirm or deny on that. But in terms of, yeah, that would be the only, that and air conditioning would be the only kind of extra weather modifications for hotter climates, as it were, that, uh, that I was aware of. And then I had a second question which is probably the crux of this video, really, uh, from Rustin Oil. Does the rest of the world's vehicle have different parts ahead of a UK destined vehicle? Well, yes, it does for 300 TDI, but those newer parts are basically TD5 parts. So if you're a TD5 owner, uh, a lot of what's on a rest of the world's pet vendor would be quite familiar to you, whereas a 300 TDI owner, it wouldn't be. Um, I do tend to find that a lot of owners will stick to one engine um, and the knowledge of what the other defenders are like is, is, uh, is quite limited actually because there were so many changes in defenders over the years, it's crazy. Um, it is actually crazy from, from you know, 9110 era to, to Puma era, there were a lot of changes and it's very easy to think that your defender is what defenders are like but they are very different. So I'm just gonna run through a couple of things. So for example, so 300 TDI owners who love the 300 TDI would never go electronic, i.e. TD5. They may not know some of this stuff. Whereas the first three defenders I ever drove were rest of the world spec. So I thought that's what a defender was and it had 300 TDI. So when I came to the UK, I bought a 300 TDI and there were kind of, for me, there were some certain things that were, were a downgrade and I was like, oh, it doesn't quite feel the same because they're kind of like 90s era Defender mods as opposed to 2000s era, you know, Defender features. So there's all the obvious differences that everyone already knows about, you know, it's got the TD5 dash and, uh, you know, later chassis and a plastic fuel tank and the, and the rear axle's different and those are all the obvious stuff. But I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that you may not necessarily know about uh, that is different on a rest of the world spec 300 TDI. And also if you want some of the main differences in detail, then I walk around this vehicle in another video, um, picking and pointing everything out. 
So what are those kind of things? Well, a couple of things there. I guess the most straightforward one, let's get my keys out, is, right. So these are the keys for the rest of the world's pet defender. You've got one key, one big key, that does the ignition and all the doors and the rear door, and you've got the fuel filler, and that's it. Whereas a 300 TDI in the UK, you've got door, fuel filler, ignition, and the key fob. And I bloody hate this. I hate having a bunch of keys this big. And this thing is problematic. I keep dropping it. Like you just drop keys, don't you? And this thing hits the deck. And every couple of years, I've got to resolder the battery connection inside. It pops out of the circuit board. And, and I've had some immobiliser kind of starting problems in the past and it's very temperamental. I just don't want this rubbish. And alarms in the UK, like defenders get stolen with alarms all the time. It's not really a security measure. So I would just prefer the setup when you've got a smaller bunch of keys. Plus as well, you know, having the same key that does the ignition and also the doors. Just make, it just makes a whole lot of sense and that's how I'm used to it, you know. Let's get a bit caught on it, I mean, you know. These are the larger door handles. These are from about 2002 onwards. So TD5 owners will be totally au fait with this, you know, having the same key for everything. But 300 TDI owners, you've got to, uh, see there, just drop my keys. That's how you do it. They will be, uh, 300 TDI owners may wonder if there's a different way. And there is, and that's why part of the reason why I think the rest of the world's better defenders are a bit better. What else have we got? Steering wheel. This is this one's really subtle actually. Um, this steering wheel, this is one of the biggest things I noticed actually. This steering wheel is from my 1997 Defender 300 TDI. Um, it's just on here as a, as a placeholder. It used to have an after, aftermarket on it. What I've done is I've fitted a, late, fitted a later steering wheel on my 300 TDI because I cannot tolerate this. It's, it's, it's fatter. It's very subtle, but it's fatter. The, the, the 90s era steering wheels are fat. And I never, I never really enjoyed it. I never liked it. I don't like fat steering wheels. Um, but the kind of 2000s era ones are a lot thinner. Here is my 97 Defender. This is the latest steering wheel. It's a lot thinner. I mean, it's not, it's perceptibly thinner. It's not a great deal, but it's perceptible. And I feel, it just feels more natural to me having a steering wheel like this, which I was used to. Another one here is the, uh, this is my Silomar 97, the bonnet release latch on the 300 TDI, the original. And so this is, I've retrofitted this because I cannot tolerate it on a 300 TDI, I hate it. You have to pull. Mechanically, it's a really awkward and nasty thing to do and they get gummed up and it was getting to the extent that I couldn't, you just can't pull it out. You have to get like, mole grips or something to be able to pull the bonnet release cable. It's just not what you want. I mean, as a Defender owner, you're under the bonnet all the time. So this one mechanically makes so much more sense. It's got a lever action and you just bring it up and that's the kind of a TD5 era. All rest, you know, rest of the world spec Defenders have got this. So that's what I was used to. So I just had to fit this back on. If we're looking at some of the later rest of the world spec vehicles, they would have plastic inner wheel arches. So this is a TD5, this is a 2004 TD5. It was about 2004 when these came in. And these are plastic arches. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they did it, but it's just one less thing to corrode, even though they are galvanized normally. It's just one less thing to corrode. So that's one thing that's different, whether it's an upgrade or not, I couldn't say necessarily, but that is certainly one difference on the later rest of the world's better defenders. Uh, and also they would have the later brake pipes. This one doesn't have it, but from 2004, around about 2004, it went from being female on the brake pipe and male on the rubber hose to being male on here and female on the hose. Why they changed that I don't know but that's one kind of subtle difference as well for the later rest of the world's but models. And then we have the subtlety of the gearbox cross member which is the same as the TD5 one but it's a lot better for the for draining the oil on the R380 on a 300 TDI UK you know 90s era the drain plug goes straight onto the top of the gearbox cross member. So I use a milk bottle 
or something like that to have to drain it over the side and down into a container. Whereas here, this it's ever so slightly forward and it's a slightly different design. I mean, in my Billy's uh, All The Gear No Idea video, I talk a bit about the cross member and this having this lip along the front, which was slicing mud in a track when the wheels were in the ruts, slicing the mud off and the mud up in here was just filling up. Um, but, uh, you see there the drain plug. There's the drain plug. And there's my hand. Just comes down. You can see that it's the other side of the crossman bit here. The drain plug just comes down. Whereas on a 300 TDI, it's about here. Um, so it makes changing the gearbox oil uh, a lot better. Also staying underneath. Um, you also got the K suffix R380 and the, the Q suffix LT230 which are supposedly slightly better versions of those units which were fitted you know later on in its in its use so the td5 era that the 300 td 300 tdis would have got now my 97's got a j suffix then it went to k oh, sorry not k suffix and then it went to l suffix um r380s supposedly ashcroft say that the difference is uh stronger bearing i think um so when I got my reconditioned gearbox on my 97, I got a, I got a K slash L suffix. Um, but these would have been fitted with them for, by standard. And then the transfer box being a Q suffix, LT230Q, the, uh, the gears were cut slightly different. Q is supposed to stand for quiet, I think. Um, so supposedly the, the, the gears were cut more helically so that they would be, they would run a bit quieter. In practice, I've not. You wouldn't, I don't think you'd notice any difference to be honest, but uh, supposedly um, that's what it's all about. And well, it's just nice to know that you've got uh, a bit of a refined setup in your transmission in the rest of the world's pet defender. And probably the last subtle difference, which I haven't really pointed out before, and people may not know, is that the rest of the world's pet kind of came in different, well, it's called flavors. Um, People think of them as basically poverty spec, you know, wind up windows, no alarm, 300 TDI, that kind of stuff. But they did come with a few of those, uh, shall we say, accoutrements of the TD5 era, depending on the market. Now, a lot of this you can basically decipher from the bulkhead looms. There are quite, there's probably about 16 or so different bulkhead looms you can get for rest of the world's pet defenders. And I, I own one, which is why I got digging into this. So in left-hand drive versions, like this one, you can get basically no features, or you can get ones that have got electric windows, or you can get ones that have got central door locking, um, and they've all got no immobiliser. So you can get them with electric windows, not this one, with the buttons in here, but not at the same time as having central door lock and the, the mobiliser is not included, which is interesting. So that would probably be markets like Brazil. In right-hand drive, you've basically got inside and outside of South Africa. Um, I don't have the data with me at the moment. I'll put the data on the screen about the split between left and right, how many rest of the world's pet defenders there were in left and right-hand drive around the world. But the big markets for right-hand drive were Kenya and Tanzania, uh, and also South Africa. So kind of Kenya, Tanzania spec, you would have, um, basically nothing so you could have it just bare bones spec um, or you could have it with central door locking or you could have it with an immobilizer or you could have central door locks electric windows immobilizer there's some reference to abs i'm not actually sure that a 300 tdi was ever fitted with abs from the factory but it does kind of hint to that in microcap so basically so that was outside of south africa and then inside south africa you could get nothing as normal or you get central door locking with an alarm so this is the only market that supposedly has got an alarm um but not an immobilizer and with electric windows and that's kind of what the kalahari defender is so in south africa you could get i think i believe you could get bog standard rest of the world spec defenders and then you'd get kind of rest of the world spec defenders with a few td5 things as it says here like central door locks alarm um electric windows and that would be 
what was branded Kalahari with the, the decals on the side. Now, I think even within the Kalahari, you've got ones that, you know, maybe do have a few of those features and some that don't. So the Kalahari is just really a, a badging of some different spec of, uh, of rest of the world, different flavors of rest of the world specification defenders. But I don't think in South Africa, you, you could have got all of those extra features without it being a Kalahari, if you see what I mean. If anyone knows specifically, then leave a comment below. I'm really interested to dig more into those vehicles. They're quite interesting. So the, so the loom, the bulkhead loom I've got to go on my other Defender at some point, which I've done a video about, the link's up there, uh, in the walk around of the looms I've got. That, I believe, will be a Kalahari loom because it's got alarm and it's got central door lock and electric windows, um, the wiring for that built into it. Also, South African spec, which I think is the only South, only South African spec, rather than any other rest of the world spec, Defender spec, is uh, rear speakers in the back. The, the chassis loom has uh, four extra wires for rear speakers. And I've got that loom as well. That's the other one I've got. So I've got kind of a full, full, um, full setup for a Kalahari um, rest of the world spec Defender. And then in terms of aircon, that's actually driven from the uh, the engine loom. So you've got aircon and non-aircon uh, looms. There's not really any difference in the bulkhead loom. They've all got the ability to have aircon uh, fitted fitted there. So that's interesting. I've never seen uh, any other than the Kalaharis that I'm aware of. I've never seen rest of the world's pet defenders with central door locks or immobilizers or or um, electric windows. Actually, that kind of doesn't appeal so much to me. I'd rather just not have alarm or immobilizer or anything like that, which is what most people think of the rest of the world spec and what I would actually want, to be honest. I don't want to be carrying those big fat keys and having something that's, in the UK at least, is not going to be saving your vehicle from theft. Really, you need different layers and mechanical settings because when a car alarm goes off in the UK, no one bats an eyelid. It's just an annoyance at 3 a.m. Um, so I'd rather have different layers of security and not rely on the alarm and just remove the alarm enti entirely. It's more likely going to stop you being able to start your vehicle than it is stopping a thief from getting the vehicle. So, so I talk a lot about these features in kind of one breath with 2006 era models. And, uh, it's, I, you know, I'm interested in the 2002 to 2006 era. And there were some changes that I've talked about in this video around about 2004. But most rest of the world spec defenders were made in 2006. 15,000 of that type, 2002 to 2006, 15,000 made, about five and a half thousand, so that's over a third, were made in 2006. Um, the other big year was 2002, so when, the, when they basically first put out the TD5 kind of upgrades, uh, 2000, the facelift kind of upgrades and other extra bits. Um, so there's a big batch made then, big batch made in 2006, so 2003, 4, 5, um, even though this is a 2003, 2003, 4, 5 are less numerous than 2002 or 2006, and 2006 is by far away. 2002 had about 3,000 made. Um, the other, the other years, other years had between about 1,000 and 1,800 uh, made per year. In terms of the UK, most of the ones you'll find are 2003 or 2006. Really, that's when most of them. There's a couple of 2004s, one 2002, 2005s that I'm only aware of. Um, so it's really 2006 or 2003, but uh, so that's why I kind of see the 2006 model row defender as um, kind of like the gold standard, because that's most of the ones um, that exist really and have got all the latest upgrades. So things like the plastic arches you'll see on those defenders. And they were mostly made in uh, 110 station wagon form. And there were quite a few, uh, you could get hard tops as well. They're very common and pickups as well. Um, the rarest were probably uh, 110 double cabs. They do exist. There's only one that I'm aware of in the UK. And um, there's another one, I, the only other one I know about got rolled in Borneo, got written off in Borneo, which is a shame. Um, other than that, they're, they're not that common, not very, like really not that common. Uh, 130s do exist, but they're probably more common than the double cabs, 110 double cabs. And 90s are very, uh, so 90, well, not so rare, but there's only one that I know of. And the, there's only one rest of the world's about 90 in the UK that I'm aware of um, uh, that's on the road. So really, you're very limited if you want a rest of the world's about defender. You know, how's it different from a UK spec vehicle? Well, it's, you know, it's very limited or somewhat limited in what you 
what type of vehicle you get. Anyway, that was a video about some of the things you may not be aware of with rest of the world spec defenders, certain things that I appreciate in defenders that aren't fitted uh, on UK spec 300 TDIs. And as I say, these are things that I learned. I was like, oh, these things don't exist on the 300 TDI I've just bought because that's all you can get in the UK, really. There we go. Maybe you've learned something in this video. I think I learned a bit, little bit just from trying to write this list. But there we go. If you've got any thoughts or comments, write them down below. Give us a thumbs up if uh, you appreciate me talking about rest of the world spec defenders. I'm kind of a one trip pony these days. But uh, there we go, that and the Grenadier. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.